Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have the same setup as in the previous video, but with the difference is that now we're looking for the minimum value for m. So what we mean with the minimum value is, what is the smallest value n can be, such that if it's any smaller than that, the whole system will begin to accelerate in this direction. So we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent it from accelerating, but we're trying to find out how small m can be so that it will not yet start accelerating in that direction. So in, assess, in essence, we're looking in the previous video, we're looking for the maximum value so that it would prevent it from sliding in this direction. Now we're looking for the minimum value so that it will not allow it to slide and accelerate in that direction. So again, the first thing we want to do is find all the forces acting on the system. So notice we have the small mg acting in this direction. We have the large mg acting in this direction which means we have the vertical component, or the perpendicular component, I should say. It's not vertical, it's perpendicular to the surface. Since this angle here is theta, this becomes mg times the cosine of theta. And then here we have the parallel component. It should be straight, there we go, parallel component. So here we have mg times the sine of theta. We have the normal force pushing back in the opposite direction, the surface pushing back. That's the normal force, which is equal to mg times the cosine of theta. And now we also have a friction force. Now notice, without the friction force, the whole system would accelerate in this direction. So what's also preventing the whole system from accelerating in that direction would be the friction force in the opposite direction. So we have a friction force like this, force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu sub s. And the normal force, of course, is defined right here. Okay, now we're ready to set up our equation. Well, we always start out with F net equals mass total times acceleration. But in this case, since we don't want acceleration, acceleration, this has to be equal to zero. Acceleration is equal to zero. So therefore, we can say that F net equals zero. All right, that means that if we then write out the equation here, we can write F net is equal to zero. We have to identify all the forces that would be aiding the acceleration if there was one, minus all the forces preventing the acceleration from happening. So you can see that this mg sine of theta would indeed cause an acceleration if it was large enough both the friction force and the small mg would be opposing the acceleration because they're pointing in the opposite direction. So the, F, the net force then would be the force aiding the acceleration, which is mg times the sine of theta, that's big mg sine of theta, minus the force opposing, which would be little mg, and minus the friction force, which is a normal force times mu, which is mg cosine, cosine of theta, times mu, and of course it's a static coefficient of friction equals zero, because of course nothing is moving in the system. What are we looking for? We're looking for the mass to prevent the motion, so we're looking for this value right here. So we're going to move this to the other side. So we have mg sine of theta minus mg cosine of theta times mu sub s equals little mg to, on the other side becomes positive, because we move it across the equal sign. Notice every term has a g in it, so the g cancels out everywhere. And then we're going to turn the equation around and factor out a big M. So we have M is equal to big M times the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times mu sub s. So the difference between this problem and the previous example is that here we have a negative, when the previous example we had a positive there. So the minimum mass is equal to the big mass. And I guess now we need to plug in the values. So we have 20 kilograms multiplied times the sine of 30 degrees minus the cosine of 30 degrees multiplied times 0.2, the coefficient of static friction. And now we're ready to calculate what that mass can be in this case. So we take uh, 30, take the cosine times 0.2 Subtract that from 0.5, that's a sine of 30, and multiply that times 20, and we get 6.54 kilograms. 
So the minimum mass is 6.54 kilograms and the system will still remain in place, make it any smaller than that, 6.53 or smaller, then the whole system will indeed begin to accelerate. So that's how you figure out which way the system will move. Notice that if it's greater than a certain value, the whole system will accelerate this way. If it's smaller than this value right here, then the whole system will accelerate this way. And on the next example, we're going to show you what would happen if we have a value of m between those two and we're not realizing that there will not be an acceleration, what do you do then? And so stay tuned for our next example that shows you what to do when you run into a case like that. That's how it's done.